going on guys, Jels from Fitment Industries and as you can see I have Fuller here next to me today so that can only mean one thing, we are going to talk about truck stuff. And no, 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 don't, don't, don't just leave just yet because we're not going to just talk about truck stuff, we're actually going to compare truck wheels to car wheels and tell you why car wheels are just so much better. Let's get into it. So Fuller, you're, you're a truck guy, you work with custom offsets, uh, I'm sure any custom offsets guys will recognize you here. So when you get a truck and you want to buy a new set of wheels for it. You're going out and you shop for your first set of wheels for the truck. Like, what, what are you looking for in a wheel? I think a majority of the people, especially our customers, the guys that shop with custom offsets, the biggest thing that everybody wants is how wide can I go and how big of a lip can I get? So they want the 12 wides, the 14 wides, people are making 16 wides now, and they want to see how much lip that they can get and how far they can get that wheel and tire sticking out of the fender, which is something that car guys just, you know, that'd be a weird poke fitment and that's not what they're all about. Right. Where we got wheels sticking six to eight <laughs> inches outside of our fender. So so you're saying that um, not so much as design uh, goes for it, you're saying more of uh, size, what's the... Yeah, I mean, obviously people care about the designs too, but I think a lot of the guys just want to go as big as possible. It's probably the most popular question I get on Instagram. So I do all of the Instagram messages and everybody wants to know what's the biggest size wheel and tire that I can fit on my Chevy Silverado or whatever truck they're driving with whatever suspension they have. So car guys I think have it easier when it comes to like suspension stuff too because you're either stock or going low or nobody lifts a car right. and when you go up there's so many options because it can be 2 inches, 3 inches, 4 inches, 6 inches, 9 inches, 12 inches and it just all depends on what your personal preference is really. So do you think with the whole size thing, um, do you think that a lot of uh, truck wheel manufacturers uh, take like wheel weight into consideration when it comes to like designing their wheels? I, there, I don't think there is many that do, which I think wheel weight matters, but that's because I also drive cars and so I, I know the adverse effects of unsprung weight. And uh, there are some people though that do care about it. We were just out at SEMA, just got back and I was talking to one of the forged wheel manufacturers and they're really focusing on trying to minimize how much weight they're adding to the wheels because they have an option for a billet cap. So most caps in the truck world are plastic. I'm assuming cars are pretty much the same mm -hmm. too. And uh, they have an option for billet, which is metal. So they actually are shaving out the back of the cap now too, so that it's just like hollow and reducing as much weight as possible. But it's just a couple ounces on a you know 24 by 16 inch wheel that already weighs 50 plus right. pounds. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I think that's one thing with like car wheels too is that um, a lot of like when you you're seeing an ad for a car wheel or something like that, or like a like a line or a brand is coming out with a new line of wheels, they're like, oh, they're gonna be like super lightweight. You're gonna save this much weight and everything. And it's kind of the fact that we pretend that we care about the weight <laughs> a little more than you yeah. know than we actually do. So you know, like the track guys probably really care you know, more than you know the the guys that are just doing it for looks. Definitely. So you know, when I was driving trucks and picking up truck wheels all the time, it's quite a pain in the butt to lift mm -hmm. them. And then I bought my drift car and I got a set of Cosmos 006 R's on there. And I went to go pick up the wheel and tire after I set it on the ground and I literally <laughs> almost <laughs> threw it because it was so light and I, I couldn't believe it. But yeah, I think wheel weight does matter in the car world way more mm -hmm. than it matters in the truck world because these things are so heavy. We already get terrible gas mileage. Mm -hmm. You're lifting it. So they're like, eh, what's a couple hundred pounds? So kind of go along with that too then. Um, obviously the way the wheels are made a lot of the times determines how they turn out as far as weight. So like your, your cast wheels usually are gonna be heavier mm -hmm. than like your forged wheels or your three piece and stuff like that. Do you technically think that a lot of the truck wheels are, what kind of process do you think most of them would go through? Are they mostly cast or are they mostly so we forged? Actually we just looked up some data on this and it, I think it was 95% of the wheels that we offer on our website are cast wheels. The other 5% then are going to be a forged wheel or the weird oddity of compression forge. So like in the car world, you got rotary forge, flow form, compression mm -hmm. forge, all these different names. But in the truck game, we are brand new coming out in the whole compression forge thing. So Axe Off-Road is one of the companies that does it and compression forge, which I'll briefly explain for you guys. It's basically like a cast wheel, but then there's a whole bunch of heat and pressure and spinning involved and they pull out the barrel of the wheel so that it's stronger in simple terms. Sure. But yeah, there's only one company that's doing that right now. Most of them are cast. And what we found with forged wheels in the truck world is they are just as heavy as cast. Really? Um, 
and I don't know if it has to do with the density of the material because there's just so much aluminum there mm -hmm. and they're pressing it with I forget what the statistic is but it's like tens of thousands of pounds of pressure to compress that all together so I think having that molecular grain structure so close and so tight you still have a bunch of mass even though it's made out of aluminum it's still mm -hmm. really heavy yeah so you actually what you're saying is uh it's either cast or forged that the, yep. the truck manufacturers are just starting to get into like the flow forming or the flow yeah. forging it's literally, there's literally only one company that's you know coming from like the car side and everything like that's what all the brands oh, are trying to do right now like that, like every wheel company out there for the car side has like a flow forge mm -hmm. line or you know so that's actually kind of interesting i never never really knew that yeah we're uh, we're a little bit behind <laughs> that technology and i don't know if it's because people don't care about weight i yeah. think it's the truck guy mentality i guess yeah. so as far as like uh design and stuff go I mean and and color I guess I mean looking at your side <laughs> of the wall and then looking yeah. at our side do but they come the in other right. colors than black and chrome and well so. <laughs> uh, the most popular finish is still black second most popular is gonna be black and milled so it's still mostly black with a little bit of a silver colored accent on there chrome wheels we haven't been seeing as much of, and a lot of people confuse chrome and polish. So like a fully forged wheel is mm -hmm. polished, whereas chrome is a plating, and there's also PVD chrome, which is like a powder coated finish. But there was a lot of issues with finish quality on that, so people have been going away from that and sticking to regular chrome or buying forged polished wheels. So. Sure. That's that. Some companies are coming out with a couple different colors, Axe again. So they're the ones pushing the envelope with Compression Forge, but they're also now coming out with red wheels and they have white wheels, which I think are going to be super hard to keep cleaning, so that'll be <laughs> that'll be interesting. But there are a couple other companies too that do a double dark tint. So basically they'll machine the face of the wheel and then spray a dark clear coat over it, sure. uh, and that's gaining in popularity. We saw a couple different examples of that at SEMA this year, so it'll be interesting to see what people do with that, but by far it black is the most popular. Yeah. And as far as uh, designs go for the wheels, just looking at them, I think a lot of them, you know, they share a lot of similarities and I can't say that the car wheels don't either, but from what I've seen, would you um, agree or do you think that a lot of like the modern styling of like the car wheels are starting to kind of seep in to the truck wheels? Yeah, as much as the truck guys are not going to want to admit that, a ton of the styles that we're seeing in these popular truck wheels have came from or are coming from the car world. And that's just because more and more trucks are being used as show pieces and mm -hmm. not as, you know, the off-road workhorses that they were before sure. where design wasn't super important. You know, everybody thinks of like the bullet hole style wheels we used to call them where it's literally just circles yep. punched <laughs> into steel basically. And now you've got very intricate like mesh designs. And a lot of people are going with those on, you know, the brand new trucks that are super high end, like your Denali's and everything that are just fully loaded and it's more of a luxury vehicle. Mm -hmm. So it deserves more of a luxury style wheel. But by far, uh, I think the most popular one we sell is like a Gear Alley Big Block or Moto Metal 962, which is just, it's like an eight spoke or six spoke, if I, I can't remember correctly, but it's literally just one big blocky chunk. Gotcha. And it's just simple and clean. And I don't know why it's so popular, but it is. <laughs> Car guys have, I think you have way more intricate designs. For sure. I would say. Yeah, I mean, and there, there's a lot more like crazy designs out there. Um, just a lot more just like way out of the box things that and that's obviously because it would fit a car better than you can't like really throw this on a truck. But what I can say that I've seen is uh, the directional wheels. Oh yeah. yeah. And I can think of one company in particular that is uh, starting to offer a proper directional wheel right. um, that's starting to come over into the truck scene. Yeah, because I would say, have directional car wheels been around for a while? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's uh, nobody wanted to do it in the truck world because, so wheels are way more expensive for trucks mm -hmm. because there's so much more material. Like you can get a set of pretty decent looking car wheels for like 600 bucks right, on yeah. fitmentindustries.com. On custom offsets, I would say most people will probably spend over a thousand dollars for a really good looking set of wheels. So the reason why people haven't been making directional wheels in the truck scene is because it's obviously double the cost because you need a left and a right. So, but Archon now coming out, which was developed with custom offsets, mm -hmm. Um, is basically changing that. So we'll see how that goes. So one thing I noticed is you car guys have had concave wheels like forever and especially in like the multi-piece segment which that's a whole other thing to get into because <laughs> like there's basically no multi-piece wheels for trucks mm -hmm. either but 
I mean, tell me about concave wheels. I mean, how, does everybody run with those or like are those super popular? Uh, yeah, I, I would say that they're pretty popular, especially like with the wider wheels that everybody's trying to fit. Mm -hmm. um, you kind of just get that naturally with the lower offsets that you start to run. Um, oh, and your low offsets yeah, are like, our low are like off still <laughs> plus 10. Our low offsets are negative 101. Which is absolutely, that just blows my mind, you know? Uh, so there's, there's dually wheels too that are like negative 176. This yeah. is crazy. Yeah. But uh, as we actually kind of covered in a, a recent video, we were comparing like lift wheels versus concave, and then what a lot of companies have been doing, like especially um, in the three-piece wheel game, have been doing like a mixture of both. Okay. So it's a concave wheel, but they have that like infinity spoke thing going on, so like okay. you still get that like three, four inch lip on yeah. the outside. So. I didn't know if that was gonna be possible in, in the car world, cause like when you have a truck wheel and you got 12 inches to work with, it's easy to make a really deep concave wheel and still have a four inch lip on there. Right. But like car wheels, I don't know, you guys run like 15 by eights or whatever those small things are. Yeah, so exactly. I yeah. didn't know if it was possible. Yeah, but. like wide in our eyes is like a 12 inch wheel. You know, yeah, that's like, like just getting started for us. Yeah, <laughs> it's like like the concept ones on uh, Jared's car. I mean, th those are a great example. Those are a three-piece wheel. It, they're very concave, but then you also get that lip on the outside of that. Yeah, you guys can keep those. We just saw a 30 by 16 American Force at SEMA. All right, guys, so I think that's going to wrap it up for today. Uh, let us know down in the comments what your thoughts are. If you need any wheels, tire, and suspension needs, hop on over to www.fitmanindustries.com. But I'm Gels from Fitment Industries. And I'm Fuller from Actually Custom Offsets. So if you need truck stuff, come on over to our website, customoffsets.com. And we'll see you later. Peace. Peace.